at some point when we work Mamba, we're going to want to process our shots or render our shots, either in order to give us back real-time playback, if we've lost that through having too many processes, or of course to deliver our shot back to the editor or whatever. So for example, in this case, I've started with a base shot, and I've then done some cloning work to take out the logos, and then tracked that back onto the original in order to get rid of all those logos off his shirt. And that's blown my real-time performance because of all the brush strokes that are going on on every frame. So whether I want to make an intermediate render in order to get my real-time playback back, or whether I want to deliver a shot to someone else, the process is the same. I just select the node that I want to render and go to Output. Then on the Output tab are all the options I have for choosing what sort of media I want to create and what sort of metadata goes with it. We'll come and have a look at them all in detail shortly, but just briefly, if I were to pick a movie format and choose, say, a ProRes, I could give it a name and hit Render. The difference between foreground render and background render is foreground render will use all the processes to render as quickly as possible, whereas background render will leave you enough processing power to keep working while it's rendering in the background. So having completed the render, Mamba drops a reference to that new media into our nodes. Of course it's standalone because it isn't connected actually to how the media was made. And if we click Attributes, we can see where that media resides. And we'll come back shortly to see how it ended up here. Now depending on why I rendered this clip would depend what I now do with this reference media. If I were just rendering it in order to deliver it back to an editor or a colorist, actually I don't need it on my nodes because it was just a delivery file. I can just take it off here. It hasn't deleted the original file. It's simply taken it away from my display. On the other hand, I might have rendered this because I want to carry on adding effects, but this portion is slowing me down. In which case, strictly speaking, I don't need these anymore, and I can just add my effects to this. Of course, the worry there is that I might want to go back and make changes to how this was made. Well, actually, that's quite easy, because if we go into our media folder, we can see that under the data folder and under render, we'll actually see there's a new folder that's been created with a name that I set for the render. And in there are two types of files. There's a clip file, which is green, and a purple render file, the RND. The clip file is actually a reference to the media. So actually it's identical to that clip. It's a reference directly to the file. The other version, the render file, is actually a group. And you'll recall that a group is a container. So if I press page down to go into that group, we can see that actually it contains everything that made that file. So in terms of being able to go back a step and effectively unrender a clip, we only need to go and find this render file and drop it into our nodes. I'm pressing Shift G to ungroup it. If we did want to maintain these two together in our nodes, one trick we could do is actually group everything together, pressing G with everything selected. So inside this group now is both the rendered media and how it was made. And what the output of the group sees is whichever is red, which indicates the root node. So in this case, the group will actually only see this. But if I were to select here and go set root node, you can see that this has gone red. So now the group would actually be responding to the unrendered footage or unrendered process tree. Let's go back and look in more detail at the options that we have. So the first thing I chose was the format of the full resolution image that I want to render. And there are effectively three options. Mystica or Mamba's own internal file format, general movie files, or general image files. Having chosen a tab, clicking on the format will then give you the options. So you can see there's a fair array of image options, in this case, that we might want to render to. Likewise for movies, and the manual will say how to add codecs using the FFmpeg library. Many of these are known presets, for example, a standard ProRes or an uncompressed QuickTime. Some, like the MPEG-4, have additional parameters in the Mamba configuration program, such as the default bitrate. The Mystica or Mamba bespoke formats are all uncompressed movie files. Although they're all uncompressed, they're arranged in such a way that they provide improved real-time playback because they use disk bandwidth more efficiently. But of course, they are formats bespoke to Mamba and Mystica. So if you're just making an intermediate render within Mamba, 
these are great file formats. Or of course if you're sharing a project with a Mystica. If your shots are intended to go elsewhere, then you'd be better picking one of the more open formats. Underneath the format selection is the target. What this is, is a list of presets which describe where the media should be stored on your drive and what it should be called. There will be defaults in here already from the installation process and those will let you render your media to a pre-described location. We'll look later at how we can use a path builder to generate our own templates so that we can fit our file formats and naming conventions within an established pipeline or workflow. But for the time being, if you render any shot like this one and just want to know where it is, click on Attributes and it'll tell you where it is. You can also choose options to render the proxy image. This is a user-definable lower resolution file that in fact is used here when you choose between full res and proxy res. The ratio between the two is set in the configuration program, it's usually a quarter. In fact, you rarely need to choose to render a proxy image because actually Mamba will generate one on the fly anyway. So I have to say I haven't rendered a proxy image in a long time. But I guess it's good to know that you can do if you want to. The resolution of the file that you're rendering will be the system resolution, whatever you set in the Mamba configuration program. But if you want to go out to a different resolution, just enable this and click settings. So for example, to go down to 720p, just typing in a different resolution, and then you might want to hit fit X or fit Y or whatever to get the right scaling between your output and your chosen resolution. Note that it only really makes sense to use this to go down in resolution, not up. You should set the resolution of the project in the Mamba configuration program to be the highest resolution that you're likely to want to work at. Over here we can choose whether we're rendering a progressive file or an interlaced file. So in other words, one movement update per frame or two movement updates per frame. So one per field. We can insert or remove pull down to affect 24 to 30 frame conversions. And then the render only even frames or only odd frames is for when we're working with high frame rate material. And for example, our shot is 48 frames a second, but we want to send a 24 frame version to the editor or to the sound guy, in which case this gives us a nice quick way of doing that. Over here is where we set our names. So in that render I made a file called MyProRes and it's that name that generates the folder in the media bin. We can also steal names from other clips by hitting select and get clip name. Or alternatively, if we're doing lots of rendering, we can set up a prefix in here and now when we render it'll create something called shot 0000 and the next time we render it'll create something called shot 0001 and then 2 and 3 and it'll auto increment thereafter. So we can use this if we're too lazy to type in a name each time. The manual explains more how to use the virtual slates. This allows you to burn into the image certain metadata about the source material. For example, to burn in the clip name and the time code into the first five frames of the shot. There's a more advanced version of that in the overlay burn here. Again, one for the manual. Down here we can make some decisions about what metadata goes with our rendered clip. For example, at the moment I've got use the source clip name and use the source time code. So that means that my rendered file will actually have the same time code as the highest original source file in my processing stack. So this enables me with these settings to send files back to the editor that have the same time code and other metadata that means that their conform process will not be upset by anything I've done. Alternatively, I could make sure that the file is called precisely what I type in here and using the timeline code would take the code from here. If you're rendering an image sequence, Mamba will create a folder in order to hold all those images. If we then go back and re-render that shot, we can choose whether or not Mamba initially clears that folder of the previous version and then rewrites the image files. And here we can choose what the first frame index is for when we're creating an image sequence, whether it starts at zero or not. And over here, for the programmers amongst you, if you want to create a script that needs to be run when a render is completed, you can 
reference to it here. So for example, to automatically convert a file or FTP a file or that sort of thing. And if you're working in an environment that has an SGO render farm, perhaps via a Mystica, then you can alternatively send your renders off to the farm via here. The flush image cache isn't strictly speaking part of output. It just allows you to refresh the copy of the media that Mamba holds in memory. An example of where you might use that is if, for whatever reason, the media that this is linked to changes. It keeps the same file name, but the media itself changes, in which case the version that Mamba has in memory might be outdated. So a click of that will fix it. For all of these settings, we can use these functions here to create presets. So for example, we could create a preset for client approvals where we set maybe a movie in MPEG-4 down resed using the render name and save that as a preset. And then separately, we could create another preset for delivery, which might be as an image to DPX with the, with the tape name from the header of the file. And then we can choose very quickly from a drop down here to repopulate all these settings based on those presets. There are two final options here. .rnd with media. You'll remember we looked into the media bin when we rendered something and we found this .rnd file, which was under our data render folder. Alternatively, you might prefer to have the RND file go with the media itself. So in other words, it's stored wherever the movie file or DPXs or what have you get stored. It's just a workflow thing, whichever works for you. And the export to Nuke, that's a function that allows some of the simpler stereo correction tools to be exported from Mamba as cards to Nuke. I said earlier that we'd look at how these presets are made, which pre-describe where our media is going to be stored and how the file names are built and so on. As I say, if you're not trying to fit into a pre-described workflow, you might not see any benefit in this. But essentially what I have in my settings is I have two presets, render name and source name. And I've got them for movies, and I've got them for images, and I've got them for Mystica. So if you like, there are six presets, two in each of those. So where those presets are made is in the Mamba setup program. So let's quickly have a look at that. So if I go to File Paths and down here Path Builder, we get this interface. So this allows me to make those presets. So let's pick one so that we can pull it apart. Just by selecting one, we can see it populates the area down here. So this is Render Name Movies. So whatever I type in here is the name of the preset that we'll see in the output panel. And essentially, if I render a movie having selected this preset, I've specified to Mamba that the movie that I'm creating must end up in this folder with this type of naming convention. And you'll see that some things have square brackets around them. Those are variables. So in this instance, if I rendered a movie to my render name movies preset, Mamba would head to the folder material Mamba media delivery. And then what it would do is it would look for a folder matching the name of the Mamba project that I'm working in. And if it doesn't exist, it will create it. And then inside that, it'll create a movies folder. And then the actual movie file it'll create will be taken from the render name. That's the name in the output panel that I type in, followed by dot and the natural extension of that file, so mp4 or .mov or whatever it might be. So that was on movies render name. You see, I've also got one movie source name. So if I click, you'll just see a subtle difference. That here, the variable is tape name. So the difference is that with this setup, when I create a movie file, the name that I type in as the render name is only my local name. Actually, the file it will create will be exactly the same as the source material's tape name in its header. Again, something that allows me to keep compatibility with a workflow. So to build up a preset, you simply start by choosing one of the three types of media that you're likely to create. The .js format is the technical name of the Mamba or Mystica uncompressed movie formats. In this case, I've got movies selected because the preset I'm looking at relates to when I'm creating a movie. Or alternatively, use this one for images. These basically just ensure that when you're on the movies tab, for example, in the output panel, that you only see the presets that are related to the movies tab. So having given a preset a name and selected which type of media the preset relates to, I can then start to build up my path. And I can either just start typing things in 
well, all of these buttons will insert a particular variable. So for example, if I were doing an image sequence, you can see it's necessary to have a frame index in there. So this is going to add the frame number onto the end of the file. Other variables I might want to insert include specifying whether it's the left eye or right eye if it was a stereoscopic render. I could include the name of the layout file or the resolution. So you can use these to build quite a complex naming convention that fits with the workflow in your particular facility. But as I say, if you are not trying to match in Mamba to a particular workflow, then the default paths that will be set in here as part of the configuration will be perfectly fine to be going on with.